Welcome to TPI, the global leader in test products. Jim Widener here to talk with you about using VibeTrend uh, software, how to do analysis with it, some of the features, and uh, just how to analyze your machines after you've went out and collected the data. So we've sh shown you in recent videos how to build your database and everything, how to collect the data and get the information back, but what do we do with that information once we get it back into the software. So you'll have your machine manager, you have all of your equipment below your machine manager, and if you click on an individual machine, then you'll have the vibration readings and everything off to the side. So I have pump one, pump two I can click on and see that this one I have criticals, pump three, see that everything's okay. So when I'm looking at this, real quickly I can see pump one's okay, I can go to my next machine, see I have a problem here, see that everything's in ISO velocity. You can actually click on the individual point and go straight to it and see your trend graph where it takes off, see the frequency that the vibration's at in the spectrum. Um, so lots of ways you can look at things real quickly. So I'm gonna just kind of walk through the process of how I would analyze data using the software. Uh, first thing you always wanna make sure in your setup that your units are set correctly uh, to inches per second, millimeters per second, however you'd want to do it. Uh, your VA band names, this is where you can name them. So I have 1x at unbalance, 2x is misalignment, 3x is looseness. Um, so that's generally what you see. When you have a high one times running speed, lots of times that means your machine's out of balance. If you're getting a one and two times, that's usually an alignment issue because it's hitting twice every time it makes a revolution. And then uh, mechanical looseness usually shows up at one, two, and three times, sort of in a waterfall style. So all the information that I have here, for the most part, is at one times off of a grinder that I've collected the data off of. So if I go here and look at uh, pump number one, I can go through and see, okay, here's the machine that was running good over time. It took off, and right here I actually balanced the grinder, and you can see the value came right back down. So if I want to go back and see it at this point in time, I can just click on it, and it takes me back to that spectrum, and I can see that I was 0.62 inches per second. So if I want to see the frequency of this peak, I can right-click right here, and this is where I find my cursors. So I can just click on my simple cursor, and now I have a cursor here that I can actually just click on and drag to the point of where I'm at. And it'll show me right over here on the left side that I'm 0 0.629 inches per second at 3,600 cycles per minute. So this was a 3,600 RPM grinder I had. I actually had set my speed up at 1,800. So that was off. If I want to update my run speed, I can just click on update run speed and simply move that cursor to 3600 here. And you can use your arrow buttons, your right and left arrow button to move it as well. So now that I'm there, I just say update. Are you sure you wanna update run speed? And I tell it yes. And now it has the run speed set correctly on this machine. So if I wanna see it in a waterfall to see what's happened over time, I can simply right click and I say waterfall, and now it'll let me waterfall and look at my data that way, where I have multiple spectrums over time. And I can adjust that and actually turn it to where it's more of an overlay, or if I want to see it from an angular view or more towards the end, I can see here was the machine running out of balance, out of balance, and then it got really bad here. We went in and corrected it and balanced it, and then we can see the value went down to 0.01 inches per second on 7.2 after it was balanced. So this gives you a really good view of what's happening with your machine when you look at it, look at it in the waterfall domain. So go back to my single FFT, and then I can view it there. The other issue that we'll run into besides uh, machines going out of balance is bearings. What's happening with our bearings over time? So if you look at up here, I have ISO inches per second, then I have my bearing noise. 
and I can click on that and it'll show me what's happening with the high frequency information over time and this one here I can see is running smooth so I'm not seeing any change so <coughs> excuse me when you see this start to increase and go up over time now you know you actually have a bearing that's starting to fail if you see it go up one time and back down that could be cavitation that caused it because the pump was starving or on an air compressor you could get the high frequency vibration to go up a little bit because it didn't have a load and you had the lobes meshing in the compressor which will cause that uh, frequency to increase um, other things that could cause it to go up though before you even run into a bearing defect could be oil like when you get water in your oil that's going to make the reading go up so because it's a high frequency vibration reading that we're looking here kind of like a wine glass when you thump it it'll give off this high frequency ring or this pinging noise um, it's not a lot of velocity or displacement but it's the high frequency ringing that we pick up with acceleration or acceleration enveloping or our BDUs our bearing damage units that we're using here those are the type of readings that are going to pick up that high frequency noise to alert you that you have a bearing starting to go out or you might possibly have a lubrication problem with the bearing. Next we have our total G's. This is just our raw acceleration. This takes in basically some of the low end noise that we wouldn't pick up with our BDUs but it gives you a good idea of what's happening with the bearing and what's going on with the machine over time. Uh, for advanced users, if they want to actually see the waveform, you can go in here and actually pull up the time waveform and view it over time. The other thing you can do at any point in time is drag your cursor over and zoom in. If I go back to my spectrum here, I can do the same thing. If I want to zoom into the bottom end here, I can do that and see my peak. Double click on it and I can zoom back out from it. So if I want to just look at the noise on the bottom here in this fan, I just click and drag and zoom in on that. So the other thing is we have our displacement. Gives you the overall values in displacement. And then this is kind of a unique feature that we have is our VA bands. You can actually trend your unbalanced condition. And as what happens when you set the speed in your machine, it's looking, putting a band around the running speed from 0.5 to 1.5 times your running speed. Then the misalignment, it's looking from 1.5 to 2.5. Looseness, it's looking for band energy in the 2.5 to 3.5 zone. So this can be very useful for trending and alarming on these different bands to let you know, okay, we're getting a high one times, our unbalance is going up, we need to go in and clean the fan and balance it this weekend. So that gives you a really good idea of what's happening with your machine, uh, common machine fault problems that you can actually set up alarms and run reports on. Which takes me back here to our reporting. When you're on the right side, I can take my machine, highlight it, right click, and say create report. At this point, I can do exception report or manual report. This is where I can add all kinds of different items into it. So I'll say next. I want my latest machine status next and I want to have my trend for my velocity or ISO and I want to have a trend for the BDU as well so I can highlight those two and add the trends then I just say next and then it's going to say the last measurement between dates or I can tell it all measurement now this is going to give me a lot of information here because I'm having it actually generate graphs and everything on everything that I've collected and looked at so it'll take a minute to do it but it's going to let you see what's happening with the machine over time and the thing that's nice this creates it in a word document so you do have to have Microsoft Word on your machine but when it creates it it allows you to edit and go in and put in pictures or add text comments all kinds of different things when you're doing your reports so it's finished down here I just click on it right here I can with the vibe trend simply replace this with your company logo if you want to and then you put in your name whoever collected it so I'm just gonna go ahead and put Jim right here and 
if I was active. So then if I cursor down after that, then it brings up my machines, tells me pump number one, everything's okay, gives me the values right there. Then I go down, here's my motor non-drive in, my trend over time. Now these you can actually click and highlight, expand them and look at them over time. You can add text, you could add a picture to the machine at this point. And then there's my trend for the non-drive end. I'm just going to click through this. Drive end. And it gives you all the information on this machine that we collected. So there's 10 pages with all the trends and the values at each location on that machine. So that way you can show what happened with your repair and everything. So it was running, it was high, we fixed it, and now it's down at 0.027 inches per second. So people can see the correction uh, is actually 0.03. But that way you can actually see the difference and change in your machine over time in your reporting. So and that's essentially how you'd run your reports and everything on your equipment. Uh, one of the probably the main screens you're going to look at is go right here through your velocity and then you can use your up down arrow keys and just walk right through your data. And This is a quick way to look at your trends over time. Then I want to see my bearing noise. I can go right here and look at all of my bearing trends real quickly and have an idea of what's happening with my machine and look for a trend that increases. So that's really all there is to analyzing and reviewing your data. I mean, you see that trend line or the graph going up like we see here in the ISO. I mean, that pretty much tells me that I have a problem. It was running here. It went to here. I can see if I look at my spectrum that everything's at rotational speed. So I have an unbalance issue with this machine and I need to go in and correct it. So see my bearing noise, everything's staying the same. So the bearings look like they're good and I don't have any issues with that. So if you want to get in your Englishes or your languages, we have a bunch of different languages for this. So if you have uh, facilities all around the world or need different languages, you'll have different languages that you can set up. And then your help file, this basically goes through, has the user's guide to help you find any idiosyncrasies or anything in detail that you really want to know about the software. Most all of it's in the user's guide here. Our contact details, uh, what the ISO chart is, language packs for different languages if you need something else that we don't have. This is where you input your activation code to where you can have full limits on the software and then your software version that you're running currently on your Vibetrend software. So if you just walk through the top here, your files, this is where you restore data if you want to bring in another database or backup data. Uh, connections, I don't have anything right now because I'm not online. Your route manager, and this is where you build your routes as I had showed you before. And then the setup to and from meter. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm hoping this gives you a really good idea on how to use the software. If you have any questions, though, don't hesitate to call us here at TPI. Um, but I hope this video helps you out tremendously in uh, reviewing the data on the Vibe Trend software. Thank you.